Alright, what's good guys? Spooky Banks, baby. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be reacting to this video called The Absolute Chaos of Wall Street Bets. It's simply a subreddit, which is another forum within the big website, Reddit. Now, what they have done is simply, they've noticed that some hedge funds have been short in this stock called GameStop and AMC. And they've showed more shares have been publicly available. So now what they've done collectively is now to come together to now buy loads of shares of GameStop and AMC to drive the price upwards. They're borrowing the shares and they have to pay it back. Now, with Wall Street, they've now revolutionized the way things are done now. Lots of communities are coming together to now buy up so many stocks and cryptocurrencies to then drive the price up to make a profit of it. But as you can tell by the name Wall Street Bets, you can tell that this isn't your average investor. These are people essentially gambling, but in the stock market. So we're going to see this video, the absolute chaos of Wall Street Bets, and see how crazy it is. For a lot of people, the stock market can be a lucrative endeavor in which they earn interest on a portion of their savings each year. Just set aside a couple of grand. And if you've done your research, after a few years, watch it multiply. Or get delisted and turn into dust. But for some, years are far too long to wait. Traders want their money today and throw thousands of dollars into stocks, forex and options to get it. On one side, you've got the retail traders. Usually trading on the side of their main job, these guys are normally pretty sensible, clued up and use a detailed series of charts and strategies to predict where stocks are headed. We are retail traders, by the way. You know, anyone that's not within the institution trading millions of dollars, us with the retail traders. Then you've got the professionals, the institutional traders and bankers who have spent years studying markets and have access to Bloomberg terminals, walls of monitors, and millions of dollars. They spend hours charting and write full essays of due diligence before even thinking about going in. Cunning, careful, and calculated. Then there are the other traders. The mentions of Microsoft's ticker on a popular subreddit that's dedicated to markets. It was discovered on Reddit. You can think of this similar to a sort of video game hack. You put down a little bit of a deposit on margin and then you get infinite leverage. Getting people to take more risk than they want to. Here's what these kids are doing and they're psychopaths. <laughs> Wall Street bets. An online message board so pungent with autism, its members make the Rain Man look like James Bond. By turning stock options from a hedging strategy into a glorified bet thread, people on the subreddit have managed to... And this is what I tell a lot of people, you know, a lot of people feel like since you're in a stock market, you're investing. No. If you're buying something just because someone else is and you think it'll go up, that is gambling, guys. You know, you're not doing due diligence correctly. So again, a lot of these people in this forum, a lot of these people in these forums, they're just gambling straight up, you know, that's what they've done convert the entire stock market into their very own personal casino. Add that to zero commission brokerage apps available to everyone with a mobile phone, lock everyone in their house for months on end, and you've got an ungodly amount of people on board. The process is simple. You start your career by signing up to Robinhood, a zero commission online brokerage infamous for being absolutely terrible and breaking constantly. Oh, lost $20,000 because of a problem on our end? Here's $75 compensation. Despite its problems, it's still far better than Quest Trade. Robinhood's the bottom of the barrel of brokers, and as such, usually attracts likewise traders. But it just about works. Once you've signed up, it's usually best to read up on trading terms so you have a shred of an idea of what you're doing, but this stage is completely optional. Once you're on Robinhood, you're set. It's time to lose money. This usually starts by logging on to Wall Street Bets. The subreddit itself is home to a few things, bull posts, bear posts, gains, losses, but mainly, it's a bunch of shit posts and memes. Useful stock tips and actual thorough due diligence can occasionally be found however. Once located, and after skim reading a few lines of it and glancing at some charts you've pretended to understand, it's time to go all in. The YOLO, the subreddit's signature move. Essentially, an investment of all of the cash in your account once the cash is on hand yeah i just want to talk about that again guys on our channel we're investing for long-term wealth so investing all of your money or all of your net worth is actually irresponsible bro. so all of these things you see in this video please take it with a pinch of salt and just see it for entertainment purposes because the way these guys are investing is it's not the way i do it i'm just looking at this and i'm laughing at it and it's time to suit up the weapon of choice almost always being options on spy a fund that tracks the overall us market what are stock options basically an option to buy or sell a stock at a specified price. When you're buying a call option, you're basically paying a premium upfront to bet that the value of a stock will rise to a certain price by a certain date. 
The further the price goes beyond your selected strike price, the more your call's worth. But if it doesn't hit your strike price by the expiry date, you're not paying this month's rent. <laughs> Puts are the same thing, but they're generally for when you think stocks are going to fall. If an option hits your strike price or more, you can exercise them to buy or sell the shares, or sell the options on at any time before the expiry. Now the nature of options allow for a huge potential and upside, banking numerous people up to 10 times their investment, but also losing others all of it. There have been a few tragic losses, but even for those that lose everything on Wall Street bets, there's almost always another portion of grandma's pension up for grabs to head nah, straight back that in. Is so bad. That is so bad. That is so bad. <laughs> it's 2012, and after being exiled from r slash investing for constantly pumping risky trading ideas, Reddit user u slash jartek decides to make a subreddit of his own, and on January 31st, Wall Street Bets goes live. It's not long before the subreddit adopts a 4chan-like etiquette of calling each other retards and autists, and casual mentions of cockoldry are everywhere. It's also not long before people on the subreddit start playing around with options and penny stocks. The trades start out pretty tame, but this doesn't last for long. It's also worth mentioning that everyone on the subreddit was relatively competent with stocks and had some idea of what they were doing. Until 2015 around the time when Robin Hood starts to gain some traction. From there, it's not long before they find Wall Street bets. The subreddit hits 10,000 members, and the slow influx of Robin Hood traders begins. Naturally, the quality of posts on the subreddit take a hit. In late 2016, this influx only accelerates as Wall Street bets starts to leak onto r slash all, growing the sub to around 50k by mid-year. By this point, many of the original members had had enough, and left the subreddit for good. Numerous events unfold over the next few years, with users like Wall Street Bets God appearing, claiming to have made $8 million from 43,000, someone makes $110,000 completely by accident, Martin Shkreli becomes a mod. But by 2019, the sub had grown to 700,000 members, and the autism was cranked up to 100. It's mid-January 2019, and Reddit user Ionyman decides to stray from the subreddit's proven strategies. He's still trading options, but this wasn't your usual options trade. This was a box spread, a highly complicated strategy that involved both buying and selling equal amounts of options at the same expiry and strike price, and profiting by taking advantage of pricing inefficiencies. Box spreads are generally not very profitable, and the commission charges slapped on top of them usually make them not even worth bothering with. But Irony Man was on Robin Hood, and Robin Hood doesn't have commission charges. Bingo. Time to go in. Now Irony Man only has $5,000 in his account, but by trading these box spreads, he manages to take on around $300,000 worth of margin. That's a leverage of 60 to 1. Now obviously, this should not be possible, but Irony Man's strategy was so autistic that not even Robin Hood's risk management knew it could be done. He'd also worked out that the box spreads were completely risk-free, meaning he had no money at risk. If those options remained unexercised, in two years, he'd make around $40,000. He goes on Wall Street bets and shows everyone the results. Immediately realizing the inherent risk, people tell him not to go through with it, that there was risk involved, that he was completely retarded. But Irony Man had run the maths. He had no money at risk. It literally could not go tits up until people started exercising them. See, Irony Man thought that for every call he sold being exercised, he could exercise a call he purchased, meaning a loss of only $500 per spread. But here's the thing, he sold 500 spreads. On the same day he opened the spreads, buyers began exercising them. So many in fact, that Irony Man had to close 283 spreads in one day. Naturally, his margin called for a shit ton of money he doesn't even have. $60,000 down and minus 2,000% later, Robin Hood actually realized what was going on and closed Irony Man's account instantly. Box spreads were removed from the platform in a matter of hours. So overall, not a great week for Irony Man. But it turned out that before things went tits up, Irony Man withdrew $10,000 of the initial profit from his Robin Hood account, meaning that while losing Robin Hood at least $60,000 and changing a major investment platform's rules forever, 
Ivy Man had actually doubled his money. Nineteen year old student Anal Farmer 2 starts out on Wall Street Bets in 2018. His first post suggests he's new to trading, asking where he should YOLO his 5k, how not to be so retarded, and so on. Fast forward to July 29. People actually go on here to YOLO 5k, as in, you know, here's 5k, I'm gonna do whatever the hell with it, whatever happens, happens. I mean, to be honest, for me to do that, I need to have at least, you know, a million ready to invest to YOLO 5k. If I have 5k, I'm investing that with due diligence, okay? You know, I don't know how these guys, it's just crazy, man. It's crazy how these guys are so used to just wasting money. They must be ex-gamblers, they must be. They must be because it doesn't make sense how so this is just happening like that. And he's a grizzled veteran. He's now got around $100,000 in his Robin Hood account and he goes all in with it on short-term expiry calls on a company called Align Technologies. It goes well. And a day later, he banks $200,000 profit. Two days later, and he heads back in. The market had gone up yesterday, so logically, no. tomorrow it was going to drop. No. He then YOLOs 170k on zero-day expiry spy puts. These puts expire the next day, so naturally, they're high risk, high reward. On the same day he buys them, a rogue tweet from Donald Trump announcing a new wave of Chinese tariffs causes the market to nosedive, and he bags another 300k making his account worth almost $700,000. Wow. Confident a market rally was on the cards for the day after, Anal Farmer 2 then put 600 k of the profit he'd just made into another round of zero digs. Okay, his first mistake is, if you just made 700 k I'm taking 350 out straight. I'm withdrawing that. I'm buying a house. What are you talking about? I don't know. That's, that's the way he's gone wrong there. Like. And or to be honest, the first place he actually went wrong was risking like pretty much all of his account. So he's made 700k, he wants to risk another 600k of that. That's... From where I come from, trading, we risk 1-2% to of our account balance. 1-2%. to So if you have a 700k account, you risk only, you know, 7 grand on one trade. But this guy clearly... <laughs> crazy. Expiry options for tomorrow. But this time there were calls. He goes to bed. But when he wakes up, it's a hellscape. A sea of red. The market was down hard again, and his $600,000 was snapped out of existence instantly. He sold the calls on for 100 k leaving around 200 k in his account. It was okay, he could make that 500 k back with a few careful and strategic- Fast forward a week and it's down to $40,000. An investment of rope was tempting, but Anal Farmer 2 wasn't done just yet. Alright, one final YOLO. Just need to find the right stock. Ah, perfect. He spots an August 14th earnings report for Canopy Growth Corp and decides to put the entirety of his account on calls for it. He goes to bed. August 13th, one day before earnings. Anal Farmer 2 is currently up 8k. Things are looking good. He goes to bed again. He wakes up the next day again to a sea of red. Earnings was a complete disaster. However, wow. Anal Farmer 2 is not selling for a loss and plans on sticking with the calls till the end. It's generally assumed that he lost the rest of his account that week. Having made and lost $700,000 in three weeks, Anal Farmer 2 decides to take a break from Wall Street bets and hasn't been back much since. That is crazy. A couple of months later, and a guy called Control the Narrative goes in. Straight off the bat, he borrows money via leverage through Robinhood and loses $30,000 on options for Microsoft's earnings report. He makes a Reddit post declaring the end to his trading career, and that was the end of it. Until he came back three days later. This time, he's only got $2,000, but there's a twist. Turns out there's a glitch on Robinhood, and it gives you infinite leverage. Multiple others use this glitch to borrow money in the millions, but control the narrative is sensible. He only borrows enough to meet his personal risk tolerance. $50,000. What the hell? I actually heard about this glitch where you can get pretty much infinite money. You're basically doubling the money and that's actually so mad. The fact that people were actually able to do this. What happened to them by the way? You know, were they in trouble? Did they have to pay the money back? If you do know, let me know down below to the people that borrowed millions of dollars well, through a glitch. The loophole worked by applying for 2 to 1 leverage via Robinhood Gold, a monthly subscription service which requires a minimum of $2,000 in your account. Check. 
Because he has two to one leverage, he now has $4,000 buying power. Control the narrative then buys 100 shares of AMD stock. He pays $3,200 for the shares, with almost half of that being leverage. He then goes to Robinhood's option market and sells AMD calls, turning over his 100 shares and receiving a premium of $3,200. He'd essentially laundered the leverage Robinhood had given him access to into a tangible cash balance in his account. And since he has Robinhood gold and his leverage is 2 to 1, he now has access to $8,000. Rinse and repeat until he hits $50,000, his personal risk tolerance. He then bets every single penny of that on Apple puts days before an earnings report, expecting bad news. Never bet against Apple, man. Apple are a great company. I'm recording on the iPhone right now. Apple is a good company. You don't bet against Apple, man. Earnings day finally arrives and Tim Apple smiles as he uploads Apple's quarterly financials. Christ, they'd smashed it. Control the narrative loses 25 times his entire account in an instant, prompting his soul to leave his body live on camera. It wasn't long before the leverage loophole was fixed. Robinhood would then go on to Wall Street Bets to clarify their policies on margin and state that anyone found abusing oh, systems wow. on Robinhood would have their account closed. They were banned from the subreddit instantly. <laughs> Wait, so Robinhood went on the subreddit to tell people, you know, stop doing this, this is not good. And now they've been banned themselves. These guys don't care, man. They don't care. Wall Street Bets is a, is a savage place. But while Wall Street Bets was busy spreading the ashes of control the narrative, a few bears had spotted something brewing on the horizon. February 2020. The Dow Jones Index is riding at an all-time high, and Wall Street Bets now has almost 900,000 members. At the same time, things were happening in China. They weren't good. A new coronavirus was springing up all over Wuhan, and it was spreading fast. China locked down the city and told everyone that everything was just fine. Turns out, it wasn't. Fast forward a few months, and almost the entire world has it, and it's still spreading. After infections start springing up in Europe and America, governments cave in one by one. Alright boys, time to close shop. Bears on Wall Street Bets had struck it big. And while infections continued to spread, bears were rubbing their hands together. These puts were going to print nicely. And they did. In March, the US market fell by almost 30%. But the lockdown was expected to cripple the economy for years. Bears were certain the worst was yet to come. So the mission was simple. Load back up on puts and head straight back in. Covid was getting worse, rent wasn't being paid, and unemployment numbers were skyrocketing. Once again, it literally could not go tits up. They hadn't taken into account one thing, however. A booming market was Trump's golden ticket to a re-election in 2020, and he wasn't just going to let it slip into the gutter. And so began the pump. The head of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, is tasked with keeping the stock market afloat, a feat that seemed almost impossible under the current circumstances. But then something incredible happened. By pressing a simple button, Jerome Powell discovered something fascinating. A real-life infinite money glitch, oh, one money. that was yet to be patched. Wow. Turned out that the Fed has a money printer, and it printed money. <laughs> the recession was cancelled instantly. In late February, the US government had pledged $2.5 billion to fight the coronavirus, but by mid-April, they'd burnt through more than $6 trillion. The Fed pledged a $2 trillion stimulus package, as well as announcing unlimited purchasing of government bonds. Emergency tendy packages of $1,200 were also deployed. The results were incredible. 40 million unemployed, the market's up. 100,000 dead worldwide, priced in. Almost $1 trillion added to the national deficit in one month. Spy 300. By simply taping the print button down, Jay Powell had ended the crash instantly, and the world's financial system was back to normal for good. And thank God for us. Excessively printing money to counterbalance economic issues has never had unintended consequences. Hmm. Bears were absolutely brutalised. Tens of thousands of puts, reduced to ash instantly. People on the subreddit would continue to remain bearish for a couple of months, but as things worsened, and the market kept rising, one by one, they fell. By late May, it was over. Even with 40 million Americans unemployed, the Nasdaq had surpassed even the pre-crash peaks of late 2019. 
the Dow Jones index wasn't far behind. The bears had lost. It had been a rocky few months for the world in general, but things- And that's the thing, in e that's the thing, even when I'm doing currency trading, you need to understand when there's a reversal, okay? There's only two things price can do, price reversal or price continuation. These guys thought there'd be a price continuation, but you gotta realize when there's certain signs that a price reversal is coming. And this is where technical analysis comes into play. Now, for me, example, you know, in terms of the market, I'm a long-term investor in Vsauce with so the S&P 500 and the FTSE All Index. So I'm just buying regardless whether it's going down or up, regardless I'm buying. But, you know, if you're trying to time the market and bet that it's going to keep going down, you will eventually lose one day. I believe in time in the market rather than time in the market, if you understand. So Things were finally improving. The economy had made a full recovery. The virus had completely gone. And the world was back to normal. But anyway, whoever this is, Big Boss, you need to make a part two. A part two of the whole game sort situation. That would be very great. But now this is a good video anyway. If there's anything else you want me to react to, do let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Really know. Let's fuck the banks, baby.